Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you tuned in last week, you know we talked about the new release of Tiled, the open source map editor. Well, Tiled is not the only open source map editor, and also it's not the only one that got a release recently. Today we're going to be talking about Ogmo. Now, Ogmo has been around since... Uh, several years, at least 2012 or earlier. Um, and it is an open source tile based map editing software, very similar um, in functionality, but not performance to the tiled level editor. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at Ogmo, what it's all about, and uh, do some hands on time. In fact, we're going to start with the hands on time. Now, this is available for Mac OS and for Windows. I do not know if this will run on Wine, but I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. In fact, it's written in hacks, so I don't even know why it wouldn't run on Linux in the first place, but the binaries are only available available for those two operating systems. And download it, it's about a 50 megabyte download, you extract it out, and here is your welcome page. We'll go ahead, we'll create a new project. Uh, we'll call this guy uh, Project 2, for no particular reason. And here you are at your main interface. Now I actually find this workflow a little bit counterintuitive to start with, but you do get used to it. So up here you would name your project, so it's called My Awesome Map. And then you've got settings you can do. You can set the default background color, so we can have a blue map in the background, uh, the minimum size of your map, the maximum size, how to export it out, how many directories to burrow down for finding resources, and we can set some properties that go with it, things like colors, booleans, and so on. So we've got string, and we'll call that string um, my super secret string. All right, and there you see you can set values for it. You can set a default value. Hello, cruel world. So you can have data that also goes in with your um, your map. So if you want to have world level information, you can do so. Now next up you're going to be doing is creating layers and tile sets. Now this is a little bit counterintuitive because you need to have at least one tile set before you can create a layer. So I don't know why tile set doesn't come first. Now I've got a simple tile set already defined. I got it from one of the download packs I've purchased from Humble in the past. Um, and it is a very simple see if I can actually preview it here. Yeah, let's go ahead and open that. I'll show you what it is. It's a very simple sprite package. You got one pixel gap in between the tiles. They're eight by eight pixels in this particular case. So we'll go ahead and select that guy. There you see it is eight by eight. We will call this Seaside Tiles uh, path there. And like I said, there is a one pixel separation between the tiles like so. So there you go. We've created our Seaside Tiles tile pack. Now we can go up back here to layers and we can create a new layer. So the first layer we're going to create, there are four kind of layers, but really only two make sense. These two uh, are undocumented, so I'm not entirely certain how to make them work. Uh, but the ones you're going to use most of the time is tiles for your tile map and entities for doing uh, data markup on your layer. So we'll go to tile map. We'll call this one the tile layer. You can have multiple tile layers, by the way. So if you want to have uh, like uh, parallax or depth or anything like that, you can easily do so. Uh, come up here, pick your tile sets. So why did my tile set not get updated in name? I don't know, that's irritating, but here we'll pick our tile set. It's a 2D tile like this. Um, and then, yeah, so that's it. We are now ready to go. Now this is again, a little counter to Now what we gotta do is go ahead and do a save and it'll bring us into edit mode. You'll see here we have our blue background. And if I zoom in, you will see our painting surface. We got an eight by eight grid and then we can start drawing. So if we want, we could have a, pick our tile from over here. We can set a mass tile background. So if we wanted to have, uh, Let's say this one, we come up here and just straight out flood fill it. So there is our map flood filled with that tile. Uh, we can keep scrolling the edges using these guys. We can kind of keep growing the map as we wish. And then basically just kind of start coming in here, going to edit mode. You can start painting in tiles. So let's get high contrast. You can paint like this. Um, I'll do a filled in area like so. Let me just make sure. I'm not sure it's gonna jump diagonals, but once you've got a solid filled area like this, uh, we can then go ahead and use something like the flood fill brush. So let's pick a brand new tile like this one and paint it in. There you see it flood filled in the result and you're seeing the transparency. So the blue from the background layer is there. Uh, again, we can have multiple layers going on. We can also draw in line form. So let's pick a different tile. We can draw a line of them like that. And then we have a box like that. So it's, it's pretty straightforward and simple. You can also select a tile using that method. So then once that tile is selected, you can go back to using it accordingly. And yeah, that's kind of the primary screen. So you, here's where you're going to have your levels. We'll go back to edit. So if you want to make any changes, you got to go back and edit your project again. So I'm going to go ahead and save that guy and we'll call this level one. All right. So now we're back here. Uh, we're at our project again, we can set our properties again. I don't really know why. Oh, now it is updated. All right. So that's obviously a glitch. 
So eventually, once the layer gets changed, you do get the default tile set name changed out. Now, the other thing you're potentially going to do for creating a layer is we come in here, we can say create a new um, entity layer. And this is where you're going to put your game logic stuff in here. So we'll call this one spawn points, for example. And you see here we got required and excluded tags. Well, we could select the entities that are compatible with that particular layer by using those tags. So over here, we're in the entity area. And here's where you define entity. So we'll call this one the player spawn spawner like so and you've got all kinds of things you could set right here we could set a preview image for it we could set just a, an icon so let's do that we'll just make it uh, an 8x8 eight eight red icon here I'll actually make that yeah fine I'm fine with red so we'll go ahead cancel out of that here we go and we can give this guy attributes as well the same things that we saw before so integers texts and so on so if you had some data that went into your game, you have those options available to you right there. Uh, we can change out properties on so we can make it resizable or not resizable. We can anchor it. We can have it go to a certain origin. Uh, we can set the uh, the size of it here. So probably match the size to the tile icon size. And then we could give it a tag. So we'll give this one the tag of player. So now what we could do is go back to our layer. And then you'll see we could sit here and go, all right, so we're only going to show players in this particular uh, anything tagged with the word player in this particular layer. So now that we've got that, click save again. Now we are back in our level. You'll see we now have two layers to work with. Now the first one you see, obviously, it's a tile layer, so we get our grid of tiles here. Here we go into our spawn point layers, and we have just access to our entity. So we only have one entity. That's the player spawner. And now we can go ahead and add one into said world. And uh, you've got other tools up here. So we've got the ability to create. Uh, we've got the ability to resize if it's tagged rotate and node. And that's kind of it. So this is where you would add your data. You could also have uh, an entity layer here for say collision layers or you know enemy spawn points or uh, you know, basically any kind of a logic detail you need to export to your game. This is not a graphical thing per se. Um, and then we can switch back and forth between them. We can also toggle the visibility of things on and off. It seems like my first tiled layer did not get saved. So again, the workflow I don't find exceedingly um, uh, obvious to me. Uh, th there are some things I struggle with a bit, uh, but okay, so why are you asking me? All right, so I'll just discard, I'll exit out of that, discard. So I don't like this hub world kind of in out kind of setup. I, I think it could definitely use some improvement, but for the most part, everything you see here is quite clean and easy to learn and understand, except grid and decal. I will get back to these in a second. I'm assuming like a decal layer is for putting props and such in your game world. I just don't know how to actually, I don't know what you're selecting when you say select here. Uh, I don't really know how any of this work. And even when you get back to the grid layer, it's not immediate obvious, immediately obvious what this layer is all about either, but we can add things to do in our grid. Uh, we can have a 1D or a 2D grid. And I'll get to the help in just a second, which kind of shows where that could be a little confusing. So anyways, that is Ogmo Editor and hands-on. It's very easy to pick up and learn. Again, you might struggle a bit with that save project workflow thing. Uh, it wasn't immediately, it wasn't my favorite personally. Uh, if you want to grab it and download it, it's available on GitHub. I will have this in the linked article down below. Uh, you see here, you've got the download links. The download links will bring you over and you will notice that it is available once again for um, Windows and Mac in binary forms. This guy is once again written in hack, so I don't know why you couldn't get it up and running in Linux and it probably runs in Wine. As you see, you've got a layer system, project-based workflow, which again, I'm not the biggest fan of. Um, Easy integration, so there's actually, uh, it exports out as JSON files, and there's actually loaders in the source code repository for uh, dealing with it in um, the Hacks programming language. Uh, by the way, the Ogmo level editor is actually written by, so you come down here, you'll notice there's a link down here for Ogmo editor. It's written by Matt Makes Games, and I'm assuming he uses it for his games in the past, but you've probably heard of a couple of these, things like Celeste, um, Towerfall, and so on. So he's the guy that actually maintains Ogmo, or at least one of the people that contributes to it, and I'm assuming he uses it for a lot of these games. A lot of these started life as Pico, Pico games, uh, but they've gone on, so he's actually published things on, on various different consoles, it's Etc. So if you're interested, it is Matt Makes Games that is behind the Ogmo Editor. Uh, next up, we're on GitHub. So the GitHub, we're looking at Ogmo Editor 3 Community Edition. Uh, like I said, the release was literally just a couple of days back. So it is being actively developed. It is available under the MIT source license. You will notice this is a hacks-based project. Um, 
So yeah, that's kind of the extent of it. Now, if I go back here to the Ogmo 3 editor repository, you will also find the Ogmo 3 lib is a hacks library to parse Ogmo 3 generated files. So if you are working in hacks and you need a 2D level editor, this could be a good choice for you. But it, it, once again, the output is mostly JSON based, so you should be able to uh, import it into your language of choice. And I think there are a few uh, importers out there as well. Um, for various different frameworks and engines. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can do so. And then finally, we get into the manual. So it's got quite a good manual. Uh, and we've got details here on things like uh, the decals and the grids and so on in terms of here's, uh, you know, what the tools do and how to go ahead and use it. But there's actually no instruction in the layers about wh what any of these things are for, how you actually go ahead and create it. They really only document uh, the entities um, the entity layers and the tile set layers in the documentation. So you're gonna have to do some exploration in terms of figuring out how exactly uh, grid and decal layers work. Um, but then you also see here, we've got some instructions on uh, how you can build it yourself. And we do walk through, so if you are mostly just interested in a tile-based editor uh, with entities, the full documentation right here does walk you through everything you need to know, all of the various different settings um, for those things. And then again, we've got tool instructions, but again, you're kind of on your own when it comes to grid and decal. Now, if someone out there has experience with all these things and wants to drop in the comments down below exactly what the heck uh, you're supposed, oh, I've already closed it, what you're supposed to be doing uh, when you're creating the decal layer, like what you're selecting, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm interested to know. So anyways, that is it. That is the Aug Mode level editor. Again, this guy has been around for eight or nine years. It is open source. It, it's more streamlined and simple in focus than uh, uh, something like Tiled or the level editors built into a lot of games. And sometimes that simplicity and focus can be a really good thing. So anyways, let me know what you think of Ogmo in general. Uh, do you use Tiled? Do you use Ogmo? Do you just use your own game engine? Let me know these things, comments down below. And I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.